Right. So welcome everybody. Uh, again, thanks for the introduction. Uh, today we're going to talk about a new term to some of us. It actually came from Intel. It's called the AI PC. If you heard about this, put a thumbs up. If not, today you'll learn about it. Uh, so long story, actually, um, I knew where it started. Actually, it's one day, actually, we had a keynote uh, where our CEO and all the marketing people come together to say, we have a new processor. The processor has the features of the next generation for AI. Now, what do we call it? <laughs> so we have a group of like engineers, we have marketing, we have the executive, and our CEO said we call it the AI PC. And that was it. <laughs> Fun fact, that was it. No one can came a better word than the AI PC. And that was one of, one of the, you know, the most hottest topic of the year uh, at Intel, because we are shipping a new engine. A new engine that really changed the way we do programming today with the MPU. So um, we all heard about CPU, we heard about GPU from Intel. So MPU is a new way that we think about doing sustainable AI. So when I say sustainable, it means I can do things a lot lower power, and also it doesn't affect your battery as much. And more importantly is you can build application that in scale. So when we talk about 100 million, it's a projection by the end of the year. Uh, of course, we've been selling this like a lot, uh, but by the end of the year, when you get a laptop or any machines from, let's say, Best Buy if you're in America, you will anticipate to have some AI capable uh, capability in the machines. Why that's important? That's the open challenge for today. Think about you can put your application to your ecosystem and you have 100 million of them. How do we do that? So, well, first is what can we do with the machine today? So very different than when I joined four years ago at Intel. I, you know, at that time when I used a laptop, the best thing I can do is maybe tracking my face, uh, do some object detection. But today, we can do things like, for example, this is a VLM example. We can actually read the image and have a conversation with a computer. That actually really changed the way we think about the world already. Like, maybe we can redefine this in this use case. We define the healthcare a little bit. We can actually have a better healthcare system by having these kind of like interactive approach. And of course, these can run on the GPU already immediately. Or I recently had a baby. I always wonder what my baby is doing. Maybe now we can set up system just like, hey, what's my baby doing? By the way, someone ring the bell. Actually, I should say, who's ringing my bell? Uh, and now actually it's important because um, we can now have a lot easier way to approach computing uh, with this kind of like large number of like laptops you can deploy at the same time with capability that's never been done in the past. Of course, all this inspiration come down to one of the, my favorite demo. I started at Intel four years remember, I try to track keyboard. I try to like figure out how to track my keyboard. Don't ask me why keyboard, because it's on my keyboard, right? It's in front of me. It was a very painful job. It was like you required to fine tuning. And today with the YOLO, you can just prompt it to say, uh, here's a white keyboard, black keyboard. And these can run, again, locally with source code that is open source. And that brings to the story today. Um, at Intel, I joined as the evangelist, but my technical background was engineering. So I did many open source projects. I actually did CUDA for my PhD thesis. So I realized one thing is when you have a community that can build this together, we can have a lot of these use cases that we just talked about from computer vision, natural language model, all these amazing things that you see today, bringing to the silicon. So for example, in this case, we have this conventional AI that you can map very well to GPU, CPU. And all this mapping can be done today and you can define it such a way that you can have a very optimal user experience. Why that's important? Because I got to tell you a little trick today. Everyone using Zoom today, did you know you're using the MPU ready for background blur? So that was something that already happened in your life. And all of a sudden, your, ba your battery life double. So now you can have extra meetings. I don't know if it's a good thing. But you can be untethered. You can have more battery life because the MPU deployment provide a lot of our customer, including you today, using the Zoom call, be able to reduce the battery uh, consumptions. Why that's important? Um, so that's come back to why we're Intel for OpenFino. We have deployment issues and challenges. If you are an engineer today, I'm pretty sure you have seen one of these problems. And 
we've seen a lot of these uh, Intel, and we've seen it enough to the point that, hey, let's condense them, put them together, uh, and put a library behind it. So that's the lesson we learned. We want to strike for simplicity. You know why I care about it enough? So I've even made a slide for you today. And we want to make sure that we don't reinvent the wheel. So I don't want to make five different libraries that's the same optimization. And more importantly, we ensure our work is open source. So if you look at OpenFino today, it's Apache 2 licensing. That means everyone can contribute. Well, in a nutshell, if you haven't seen this, haven't tried this, um, that's what brought me to Intel is this is the problem statement. We have this world of models, and then we have so many different hardware. We try to put one tool that actually always trying to optimize for the performance for you. So it's a very, very easy statement for, you know, my people say, oh, you just optimize. No, actually we tailor toward the silicon. So then we go down to the assembly level. So I've seen, for example, an example we call the FNNI was that assembly code that you'll see on the silicon. And we actually bought that capability to you. You don't have to program it. We figure out that. So if you're using this runtime, it automatically map the compute to that um, silicon directly. So some of the application benefit, of course, uh, I don't want to upsell here today is about open source. But if you think about why we're doing this for the, for the community itself is we want to optimize all this. And then we'll put it into a bucket of you know, resource where you have a GitHub today. So um, one more story. I think I talked about the first story is AIPC, where it came from. Then the second story I want to tell you is where the OpenFino came from. Actually, we started about six, seven years ago for my acquisition. And even you look at the GitHub, you will see years and years of like log, right? All the open source goodie, right? Like from how we start the first release. And then there's like a little Easter egg here. That was the MPU. In 2019, we already supported the MPU. Just today, now you get it at 100 million of them. But you see why we have this kind of like open source approach? It's because we really believe the community is where it will take shape uh, for everything in this world, right? They are, the, they are the driving force. And this is proven to be true because over the year of releases, so of course, every year we release OpenFino. This is the, I don't know, seven year anniversary I said, right? Um, when we look back to the early, revision of the very first release, the things that we, we have provided for the community, we still supporting today. That's amazing, right? You won't believe it, it still works for some of it, all of it, I would say. And then more importantly to us today is we have made a lot of improvement from listening. So when I joined, it was about 100,000 download per year. Today we have 5 million download from the community, which is a huge bank. I'll say to all the people that are interested in our work and being a contributors. And to no further ado, I say, uh, if you are a developer today, the number one task I'll say is trying to get your stuff working. So I built this repository at that time with a bunch of uh, product manager, engineer for one mission. Uh, how many times, just remember, how many times you have seen a demo from someone, but you never be able to repeat it? Either you need a special hardware, you need some special library, or the source code was done six years ago or something, right? So we, I realized that problem, and then we realized that problem. And then what we have done is we put, now this is 150 example, but we put everything into an easy to use interface. We call it OpenFino Notebooks. So basically it's a Jupyter Notebooks. So you can have install, all the explanation, and all the source code all in one place. You don't have to believe me, there's a, QR code here you can scan, where you can just go there and take a look at the history of all the contribution came from the community. So I think as of today, I think it's 130 or 140, I forgot, the contributors. Uh, of course, in the beginning, it's one or two of us. And then today, when you think about how to deploy on CPU, GPU, MPU, we provide you example across the board. So you can have the same code base. So you can just like toggle a little bit. And come to my talk, by the way. I'm not going to go too technical today. I did host a webinar series to discuss how we optimize each of this. But fundamentally, you have the example that can drive these, and then you can do it yourself. Now, the last five minutes, I want to talk about uh, what we're heading at uh, and some of the contribution beyond just the tool itself uh, is the community building. So I talk about three things, right? I talk about simplicity, don't reinvent the wheel, but open source community. So personally, I 
am an advocate for a lot of things. I'll say, for example, Google Sum of Code. So Google Sum of Code is an amazing program that I joined as a student about, I don't know, that's a long time ago, maybe seven, eight years, nine years ago, actually more than that, maybe 10 plus years ago. Um, so I participate that. I was actually an intern for NVIDIA at that time, building the first mobile chip, uh, I think called a Tegra uh, demo. So then I was connecting a Microsoft Kinect to a mobile phone. So today you're lucky, you have this 3D sensor built into your phone. But I, I made the first library so it can scan, it can do 3D interaction like gesture, you can do all the things that you cannot do otherwise back in the old days. And that program taught me a lot is um, how to turn your work from your lab <laughs> on your desk onto something that you can give it to the community. Um, so the idea was like you have to always write blog so that you document your work, you make your repository. Back then, I think GitHub wasn't there, so I had to use like some other tool, S SVN, I think that's the call, to maintain our source code. And then last and not least, I think it's important to talk to mentors to listen to what the industry is doing. And that experience brought me today as well. I actually, at Intel, with a team, uh, we built in a program Again, uh, inside Google some code with the administrator and organizer. What we try to do is teach students, um, which I taught uh, the last four years, uh, how to use OpenPhino and other Intel tools to make products, right, or make prototypes. And then, and then this program, of course, uh, as a brief explanation, is a summer, short-term, three months. And then um, students get paid by Google, and then we provide our time and engineering effort to ensure that you can learn. Um, this year is already over, but I would like to share this back to the community. I think we got 150 applications this year. But it's a, it's, a, it's a very heartwarming moment that I felt. We start something small, and then over the year, it grow, and then turn into something that um, I can resonate with the rest of the Intel. Um, that's the closing. Um, I learned a lot of things from doing open source projects, and then OpenPhino is one of the many uh, I really enjoy. And if you really want to see what we are doing, again, it's not perfect. It's the open source project that we encourage everyone to try. Uh, give it a try and then tell us how it goes. Um, it's a bit of a learning curve, but I think it's worth it because like in the school, actually, I learned CUDA, remember, like line by line. I think that actually experience of learning how to do optimization is powerful and meaningful. And if you also really care about connecting with me, um, I'm hiring, by the way. So I'm actually hiring my team. So I don't want to do overly selling. But if you really want to get a job at Intel as an evangelist, so I'll be hiring uh, a team again, expanding the role. So you'll be me going out there selling open source, um, or not selling, promoting, or being the advocate of itself. And that's it for me. Uh, thank you for giving me that 15 minutes. Super, Raymond. Uh, where can they find uh, job postings? Uh, it's not posted yet. It's a, it's a pre posting. Okay, so connect with I'm you doing and this find week. Job posting. All so right, you wonderful. actually, this is, no one knows that it, except the audience here today. This week I'm All making right. a job posting. So I would like to, people reach out to me first, uh, and then you hear the job posting this week.